This is Story Recapped. Today I'm going to show a drama, romance, science fiction, and thriller film called Passengers. Spoilers ahead. Watch out and take care. The starship Avalon flies on autopilot to the colony world, Homestead 2, as the Earth's population faces exodus. It carries 5,000 passengers in hibernation for a 120-year journey. The ship encounters a meteor storm, so power diverts to its forward shields. It collides with several meteors, including a large one which causes the power system to blink and interrupt operation. The control area receives red alerts on the screen before everything returns as is. A mechanical engineer, Jim Preston, wakes up in his pod, confused about his whereabouts. A screen appears before him to assure Jim that everything is fine and confusion is part of post-hibernation. The voice informs him that he has hibernated for 120 years. Jim recalls the nature of the voyage and is happy to hear that they're nearing Homestead too. Shortly after, Jim arrives at his private room to settle and prepare for the following days. He dresses up to prepare for a lecture, but he realizes that no one else is there. Apart from the 5,000 passengers, the ship has 258 crew members, but no one is around. Jim runs to the ship's main area, still trying to figure out where everyone is, but to no avail. Instead, he goes to the observatory, where a voice shows him how far they are from Homestead 2. To Jim's surprise, the voice informs him that they're only 30 years into the journey. Jim awoke 90 years early. Jim finds an office to send a message to the company in charge of the voyage, where he explains he's the only one awake. However, the message will arrive on Earth after 19 years, and the earliest reply could take 55 years. At that point, Jim feels hopeless as he has no idea how to lead his life from there. As he walks out of the office, Jim notices someone at the bar. He quickly runs to Arthur, the bartender, who offers him whiskey. As they converse, Jim notices Arthur's weird behavior and realizes that he's just a robot. Realizing that he's on his own, Jim finds ship manuals that could help him navigate his stay on the ship. He attempts to put himself back on hibernation, but fails. His wristband also limits his access across the ship, so he tries to force himself into the crew pods to ask for help. The only companion Jim has is Arthur, whose response is operated by artificial intelligence. While expressing his worries to Arthur, the robot says that worrying won't make any difference. Instead, he should live a little. A silver lining passes over Jim, so he breaks into the ship's exclusive area and takes advantage of its luxurious amenities. He spends the following months in a beautiful suite with unlimited food and entertainment. After a year, Jim still finds himself miserable and lonely. Out of boredom, he enters a room where passengers can wear spacesuits and go outside while tethered to the ship. Jim looks at space in awe, but it reminds him of his misery as well. He contemplates taking his own life by opening the ship without his spacesuit, but changes his mind at the last minute. He runs back to the hibernation room and slips on an empty bottle. As he gets up, he sees a pod with a beautiful woman inside named Aurora Lane. Her beauty stuns Jim, so he studies her passenger profile and learns that she's a journalist en route to Homestead 2 for the adventure of her life. To him, she's perfect, to say the least. He sits beside her pod while continuously learning more about her. He debates whether or not to wake her up, knowing that doing so will consign her to death aboard the ship. But he can't handle the isolation after a year alone, so he wakes her up manually. Aurora's pod activates, which renders her conscious in a matter of minutes. Jim hides in his room, in disbelief of his decision. After some time, Jim meets Aurora as if he does not know her and explains that they woke up far earlier than the others. He shows her around the ship, and Aurora panics. She runs back to the hibernation room to return to her pod, but Jim explains that it's useless. Later that night, Jim asks Arthur to keep the fact that he woke Aurora up a secret, and he agrees. The following day, Aurora and Jim talk about fixing the problem, but there's no way to fix a hibernation pod as their resources are limited. Aurora begins to write about her experience as she learns to live inside the ship. Her daily routine consists of running, swimming, and riding. 
In comparison to Jim, she's not accepted her fate of dying on the ship. Jim shows Aurora the entertainment features of the ship and they enjoy their time together. He also introduces her to Arthur, who's still keeping the secret from her. Jim's attraction for Aurora grows as days go by. As they get to know each other, Jim asks Aurora out for a date, and she accepts. That night, both of them dress up formally and go out for dinner. After their meal, Jim takes Aurora to the spacesuit room to prepare and go outside. It's her first time to see and experience something so surreal. They hold hands as they float into space, and Aurora sincerely thanks Jim for the night. Shortly after, they go to Jim's room and they have an intimate moment together. For the next few days, they happily spend all their time together, and Aurora thinks that they're star-crossed lovers. They do everything together, such as exercising, utilizing the entertainment area, and watching the stars. On Aurora's birthday, the ship passes by a big star, and both of them examine it from the viewing bay. Jim prepares a simple dinner for her and heads to the bar for some drinks. After Jim gives them special drinks, Aurora informs Arthur that she and Jim have no secrets, and Jim agrees, oblivious that Arthur perceives this as her knowing the truth. While Jim is in the bathroom to prepare his gift for Aurora, Arthur comments that it was wise for Jim to choose to wake her up. Things start to crumble as Aurora realizes that she did not wake up by accident. She becomes furious and devastated and she refuses to talk or even be with Jim in the same room. She throws and breaks objects in a separate room to express her anger. For the following days, Jim is alone while Aurora isolates herself. She avoids Jim at all costs, no matter how hard he tries to rekindle their relationship. One night, Aurora sneaks into Jim's room and punches him while he sleeps. She attempts to beat him with a crowbar out of rage, but she decides not to end him. One day, Jim uses the ship's intercom to apologize, but Aurora screams that he took her life. She copes with the stress by watching videos of her friends from her passenger log. While this is ongoing, the control room is receiving more and more system failure alarms. Jim and Aurora notice defects in the cleaning robots and food machine having system failures. One day, a crew member named Gus Mancuso uses the intercom and ends up in the ship's main area. Like Jim and Aurora, Gus also woke up early due to hibernation pod failures. According to him, the pod should be fail-proof, so something significant must be wrong or defective. His wristband allows them access to the command center, where they discover that the ship's automated diagnostics have failed, requiring them to inspect each deck physically. Gus examines Jim's hibernation pod and informs him that the problem was the clock chip burnt out. For Gus's pod, a bunch of system failures happened at the same time, which is more complicated. He also examines Aurora's pod and realizes what Jim did. The entire spacecraft is on the verge of dying in space, dooming the entire crew and passengers. The primary engine section was the first to be harmed, but they'll have to undertake a physical inspection to figure out where. Gus excuses himself after feeling a hibernation hangover and coughs blood. That night, Aurora has difficulty sleeping, so she decides to swim to clear her mind. However, the ship experiences gravity loss, which makes the water float in the air. Aurora is trapped inside water for some time, but gravity returns and she's safe. Meanwhile, Jim also wakes up after the sudden drop and checks on everyone. The three of them meet at the control room and discover that they're experiencing rising failures. Gus discovers cascading problems and the computer creates a chronology that reveals the initial failure that occurred two years ago. He deduces that the initial failures resulted in power diversions in an attempt to re-equalize the load, but it got too heavy, resulting in subsequent failures. While coming up with a solution, Gus collapses, so Jim and Aurora bring him to the infirmary. They put him in an auto-diagnostic scanner to check on his vital signs. Because of the defective hibernation pod, he has numerous necrosis across his body, amounting to 612 disorders. Death is inevitable. The machine gives Gus the option to off himself to short his sufferings with two lethal tablets. Gus spends some time alone to contemplate his life as he sheds tears. He puts on his crew uniform and is ready to die, then hands his wristband to Jim and Aurora. With it, they may get to the regions of the ship where they need to mend things. Gus reminds both of them to take care of each other and work together. Just as he dies, the system experiences another failure, and the ship is on red alert. 
Aurora and Jim need to go to the engineering department of the ship to troubleshoot the problem. Along the way, gravity is disabled and they both float and drop at one point. They bump into Arthur at the bar, who acts defective, so Jim shuts him down to stop Arthur from breaking his hardware. In engineering, Aurora and Jim discover a hole caused by a meteorite that runs through key places of the ship. Aurora is almost sucked out when they open one of the doors due to a hole in the hole. Jim uses a liquid sealer to seal the hole further after she blocks it with a pill he gives her. As the oxygen levels go back to normal, they find more holes in the ship. They enter another room and discover that the reactor control computer caused glitches and random system failures in the ship. He replaces the broken module, but the fusion exhaust engine must be vented to prevent further damage. Jim has to go outside to fix it manually and entrust Gus's wristband to Aurora. Before Jim leaves, Aurora tells him that he has to come back because she cannot live on the ship without him. While in the exhaust room, Aurora obtains an injury from the flying shrapnel as the temperature rises inside. On the other hand, Jim goes into the exhaust passage but the vent won't stay open unless he holds it. Jim has to stay where he is to make the manual vent work, which entails risks on his part. Aurora fights with Jim on the radio, frantic not to lose him, but he forces her to pull the lever for the sake of the other passengers. The pressure pushes Jim out of the exhaust passage and his tether breaks, which releases him freely into space. Shortly after, he finds a hole in his spacesuit, which puts his oxygen on a critical level. Aurora is happy to hear that he's alive, but they encounter another problem. Jim bids Aurora goodbye and apologizes for what he's done to her, but she refuses to give up. Aurora rushes to the spacesuit room and looks for Jim in the vast space. She retrieves him, but Jim is unconscious due to a lack of oxygen. She still drags him inside and brings him to the infirmary in an attempt to save him. Unfortunately, the autodoc announces that Jim is dead, but Aurora still finds it unacceptable. With the use of Gus's wristband and his override code, Aurora selects several procedures to resuscitate Jim, but he remains unresponsive. After some time, Jim comes back to life and the procedure is a success. Aurora kisses him out of joy and relief and they embrace each other. Days pass and the ship goes back to normal. Aurora fixes Arthur and retouches his hardware while Jim studies the auto dock. He tells Aurora that the device could be used to put her back to hibernation in the infirmary, but she refuses to. There's only one auto dock and she does not want Jim to be alone again. She chooses to stay awake and spend the rest of her life with him on the ship, even if they don't reach Homestead too. Jim gives Aurora the ring he planned to give her before and they live happily. 88 years later, the ship reaches Homestead 2 and the other crew members wake up from hibernation. To their surprise, the ship is filled with trees and trailing vines as well as vegetation and birds. Aurora's voice reads the story of how she met Jim, which describes how they spent their happy lives on the ship. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications. And leave a like it really helps the channel out. Thank you for watching.